One discipline of e-health is telemonitoring, or if you prefer, telecare. It is implemented by means of fixed or mobile devices that support the monitoring of patients' vital parameters, behavior and capacities. The clinician, and more generically the health professional, make use of such devices chiefly in the intensive therapy department, charitable institutions for the elderly, and even in patients' homes. Telehealth is divided into teleeducation on health and clinical telemedicine. Teleeducation on health includes 1. Virtual seminars that are synchronous communication events, since pupils and lecturers are in different places but communicating in the same time. 2. E-learning platforms. Students and lecturers broadcast from different places at different times. And 3. Social communication. Clinical telemedicine is divided into clinical test reporting, the English-speaking definition in literature is store and forward, and medical teleconsultation. Like teleeducation, medical teleconsultation is divided into asynchronous, email-based, and synchronous, teleconference-based. But the greatest workload of the e-health is the transformation of documents from paper into digital format. The clinician within a telehealth center or system can take part in any branch of telehealth. In unified and universal health systems, like those in most Western European countries, the entry points of the patient is usually at the primary health care level. There, the low complexity care cases undergo diagnosis and treatment straight away. However, in fact, some patients carry medium complexity care problems. Following triage, the general practitioner responds by referring the patient to the second level of care. Whenever the problem is purportedly monodisciplinary, the patient is referred to the relevant outpatient care specialist. Conversely, whenever the problem is multidisciplinary or in need of intensive health care, the patient is referred to the nearest district or municipal hospital. In bigger cities, a third level of care, when offering high complexity care, is usually available. However, occasionally, only with expensive long-distance displacement from the countryside can the patient receive the access to such level of care. Medical teleconsultation aims to minimize the frequency of such displacements. There are two kinds of medical teleconsultations. One is between the second and the third level of care, namely between the district or municipal hospital and a high-complexity care hospital. The district hospital admits the acute patient, usually urgently, through the emergency room due to a traumatic event or heart-borne chest pain or arterial occlusion. The clinician requests the opinion of the third-level clinician regarding whether the patient could benefit from being referred or whether the patient is to be kept at the entry point of the second level of care. This type of medical teleconsultation is synchronous, which is teleconferencing-based, with the exchange of opinions between clinicians, mostly with regards to imaging tests. The second type of medical teleconsultation is more impacting and effective. It is mainly asynchronous, or rather email-based. It is support provided by a network of specialists of second level of care in different specialties whenever the general practitioner has no specialists on hand to address the patient. Whenever the displacement of the patient is difficult due to cultural and geographical barriers and only primary health care is available, this medical teleconsultation may support the general practitioner also with the problem solving for patients suffering from multidisciplinary chronic diseases. This type of medical teleconsultation makes use of a technological platform, mainstreaming procedures that involve various kinds of health professionals.
The detailed procedures are reported in a multimedia tutorial. The link is in the footer half. General practitioners in need of medical teleconsultation are the source of the clinical cases. All the cases arrive in the email inbox of one or more clinical coordinators who manage the process and redirect clinical information. For such purposes, the clinical coordinator needs the support of an international network of experts he can consult. Here, the language may be a major problem. Beyond the English language, we manage to communicate through Latin-based languages such as Portuguese, Spanish and Italian. These network experts are consulted only on a now and then basis. Thus, it is not possible to plan a sustainable and enduring remuneration for them, other than for research and scientific production. The third group of clinicians needed are specialist teleconsultants. The clinical coordinator can direct the clinical case of their email inbox. Afterwards, the teleconsultants go through the case and post asynchronously their counseling report back to the general practitioner. In our experience, from application to counseling, the whole process takes an average of 34 hours. Sometimes a synchronous communication is not enough to solve the case, chiefly when it is multidisciplinary, complex, or procedures not fast enough to challenge the disease. In such a situation, the clinical coordinator has to arrange a televideo conference to be attended by the general practitioner, the clinical coordinator, one or more teleconsultants, and sometimes the patient. Informed consent from the patient is needed to carry out such a procedure. This is the main responsibility of the applying general practitioner, sometimes also advised by the clinical coordinator. Building a clinical case effectively means a. Focusing on only one problem, b. Attaching all information, clinical history, physical examination, drug consumed presently, and clinical tests that are relevant to challenge the particular problem. c. Avoiding redundancy and information unrelated to the main problem. d. Drawing up a diagnostic self-orientation, or at least a differential diagnosis diagram. E. Expressing openly the expected focus of the counselling from the teleconsultant. The clinical coordinator, acting in a teleconsultation platform, effortlessly determines which clinical demands among the general practitioners recur. Clinical cases requiring the same counselling content suggests that a training tool could solve the request at once. A publicly published multimedia tutorial is an effective training tool. Here are some examples in Portuguese, Spanish and English. The user-friendly video editing software programs available enable the clinical coordinator to edit and issue a multimedia tutorial himself. 